An answer to where some of money will come from. Well, on Friday, Hawaii's congressional delegation announced Honolulu's rail transit project is getting $55 million from the federal government this fiscal year. Now, altogether, the project is expected to cost $5.3 billion. Of that, the federal government is expected to pay for $1.5 billion. And from transit plans to tackling the national debt limit to dealing with the ever-changing list of GOP contenders in the presidential race, it's been a busy few weeks on Capitol Hill. And back from Washington, D.C. now and joining us live is Hawaii Congresswoman Colleen Hanabusa. Good morning, Congresswoman, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Mahi. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now let's talk about transit. I know it's a city project, mm -hmm. but of course a lot of federal dollars coming in. And right now there's, there's a battle over who has oversight of that money, you know, is it Hart or the city council? Uh, Mayor Peter Carlisle says that, you know, federal dollars are coming in, so there's going to be oversight from the federal government. What is your thought on that? You know, it's going to go down to the charter and what was intended when they, when the people voted for the charter amendment. Uh, it doesn't matter really what uh, everybody postures and says. I think it's going to be a judicial determination, and when they look at it, they're going to say, what did the voters do when they voted it? It's very similar to us in the state and the federal government. The Constitution is the overriding document, and for the sitting county of Honolulu, it's the Charter Amendment. It's what the people determine. So we'll have to see how it plays out. I do want to say that it is not unprecedented that an authority could have, for example, the oversight over the budget and make the actual line, um, line items determination. And the legislative body could have an up or down vote. We do it in collective bargaining. Basically, DOE's budget is lump sum for most part. So, you know, there's precedent on how this mm -hmm. could work out. Um, in terms of the election next year, people talking about it, uh, Senator Akaka will not seek re-election. Mm -hmm. uh, former Congressman Ed Case has jumped into the race. Your colleague, Maisie Hirono, has jumped in. Do you have any plans on running for Senate? I've, uh, my official position is, I'm thinking about it. It is a uh, really an opportunity that rarely occurs, and I think anyone who's in elected office or, or who's concerned will consider the race. And therefore, I'm considering it, but I'm not making a mm -hmm. final decision. When will you make any sort of announcement? Probably around August, okay. one year out from the primary election. What do you think about the two contenders right now? Uh, Ed Case, you defeated him for this particular mm -hmm. seat that you're in, and uh, there's your colleague in Congress right now, Maisie Hirono. You know, I think that uh, the most positive thing about the race is the fact that they're both Democrats. And in addition to that, it just goes to the basic philosophy of the Democratic Party, which is we have been the party that's given people choices all along. What party could give you two candidates that are so different, yet very similar on some social issues as well? So I think it's a, it's a great choice. For the, the people. The big debate right now in Congress is raising the debt ceiling and Republicans and Democrats are battling over revenues and taxes. Do you think there's going to be any compromise as a deadline is approaching? There will be a compromise. I think the consequence is too great. We must all recognize that it's not just us. It's the world's economy. And I think people recognize that. There's going to be a lot of posturing. They did it on everything, like the budget and so forth. And it's, it's way above my pay grade. <laughs> but they are going to do it because, bottom line, I don't think anyone on either side of the aisle would like to see any kind of major depression hit the world. And it's, it's the ultimate responsibility where they're going to all park it outside and come in, whether it's a short-term agreement or one that does take a little bit of both sides they will agree. Well, Congresswoman, I know you've got a lot of different uh, groups that you're going to be meeting with, so good luck with that, and thank you so much for stopping here in our studio. Thanks for having it. me. And if you'd like to see this interview again with Congresswoman Hanabusa, you can go to our website, KITV.com. It is 541.